a grand reception for the Turkish president who arrived in New Delhi on Sunday. India is Recep Tayyip Erdogan's first trip abroad after winning a crucial referendum on constitutional change in April. Along with international terrorism and conflicts in Syria and Iraq, business will be high on Erdogan's agenda. Accompanying him is a delegation of 150 Turkish business leaders. I believe that as India is ready to become one of the countries with the best infrastructure available, we as Turkish people are ready to help you with this. The annual trade between Turkey and India is valued at $6.5 billion, with the balance heavily in favor of India. The Turkish president will hope to bring some parity to the volumes. In recent times, a growing number of Turkish companies have invested in India, particularly in the field of infrastructure. There is immense goodwill for each other between the people of the two countries. As we strive to build stronger political ties, the time has come to also make more aggressive effort to deepen the economic relations. Here in Istanbul's Grand Bazaar, traders consider India their most important import source of diamonds. Mehmet Jumbush has been importing diamonds from India for many years. He says when it comes to the precious stone, they look towards the east. We get our diamonds from India because it is of high quality and quite cheap as compared to diamonds from other parts of the world. My forefathers have also been doing the same. India and Turkey have had historic links for more than 1,000 years. Apart from the Turkish sultans who once ruled Delhi, it was the traders from both sides who forged closer bonds between the two countries. Traders from here have been traveling to the east for hundreds of years, bringing back spice and silk. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Erdogan will be hoping that ancient ties are reaffirmed this time with the help of information technology and infrastructure development. Saurav Roy, TRT World. Now, earlier I spoke to Sriram Chaulia. He's the Dean of the Jindal School of International Affairs in New Delhi. I started by asking him how the two countries can enhance their trade, currently worth $6.5 billion annually. $6.5 billion actually does not do justice to the... Um, uh, strengths of our two economies. I think it's uh, underwhelming, and both uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Erdogan uh, today uh, in Delhi spoke about how we need to go much beyond 6.5. They're aiming at doubling it uh, in a few years' time, uh, identifying uh, specific sectors where trade can be fastened up. Because remember, Turkey and India are two of the largest emerging economies. And uh, it's uh, a tragedy in a way that they have not discovered each other as um, you know, rising economies that have uh, complementarity and which could do a lot more. There are a number of sectors that have been identified where I think we can make real progress. Uh, President Erdogan spoke about um, um, tourism and energy and infrastructure, investing in India's um, uh, flagship programs like Make in India and uh, Smart Cities, and also uh, bringing Indian IT companies and pharmaceuticals to Turkey. There is, of course, a perception problem about doing business in both countries, and this has to be overcome. There is red tape, there is corruption, there are all these problems that have hindered um, you know, smooth and um, uh, effortless um, ease of doing business on both sides. So these are the things we need to be looking for in this uh, potential agreement. So I think the Middle East is going to become more and more important for us as we try to modernize our economy. And we see Turkey as going to be an important pillar for that relationship. And um, as far as Europe goes, uh, we have, uh, you know, a number of bilateral and we are also negotiating our own free trade agreement with the EU as a whole. And those will parallelly go on. So I I think Turkey being a major power, a regional power in the Middle East, is of value to us. And Turkey being, uh, you know, a gateway to uh, neighboring Arab countries um, and even Israel, uh, all these will matter. I think because uh, eventually we will need to uh, increase our uh, footprint in this region for us to become, uh, you know, an exporting powerhouse.